Oh. We had some technical difficulty at the top of the hour for anyone wondering where we were, what happened, what's going down. But we're, we're here, here now. now. Yeah. We're thrilled. Oh, yeah. It's the first time we've done a live in a while, so this is kind of cool. Uh, hopefully some yeah. folks will be joining us. We got some ideas for some other lives that we want to do, uh, some uh, interviews and yeah deck reveals and things so that's pretty cool got some stuff coming up and you know when mary and i do yeah. our here on the last tuesday right before the psychic spin episode you know we like to try to squeeze in a a live look at a deck and uh, oh i see vita's there and sharona's and hi guys they're all in the um in the chat there and so we figured today we do yay uh, the Somnia Tarot by Nicholas Bruno. Dun, dun, dun. And I got the book. Here's the book. And the book. Yeah. And, and these little ribbons, these little ribbons. Oh my God, he sent Nicholas. us so much stuff. He sent us spread cloths, two of them. I never get spread cloths. <gasps> Look how gorgeous that is. That's the flower from you know, death. Yeah. Oh and then, God. and then this one I like too. Mm, that's my favorite one. It's really cool. Yeah. So now it's just like, like if I do a car of the day post Mary, what I do now is I, I use those spread cloths to take the picture. Oh, that's a good idea because it's such a nice background. Oh, but so no, Nicholas, Bruno is the bomb, y'all. I mean, my gosh. You guys need to go over to hisomniatero.com. Check out all the stuff. He's like still making stuff. Yeah. You know? He's he made like he made um oh what's it? Um uh 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 not scissors, page opener. Like the page, page opener. Oh yeah. That was a it sword. out of a, like sword. a sword. Like a replica from the sword he used when he was making the deck. Yeah. And oh, did you get? I meant to ask you, did you get these postcard things? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, I'll have cool. to go. I'll have to go through the box. So he sent cool. So much stuff. That's one of my favorite ones there. All the ones where yeah. the, he's like in water. I just love yeah. those for some reason. I don't know why. They're amazing. And this deck, yeah. we when did we have Nicholas on? I think it was January show? 8th, I want to say. You guys right. can find it's, it and you know, go go over to uh thetarotguild.com and just uh go in the search box at the top and type in Somnia. It'll come up. Or Nicholas or Bruno, it'll all come up. Do a search. Well, type type Somnia, not insomnia <laughs> right right isn't that funny yeah. oh yeah i had a i had to train my computer to um put it in the dictionary you know so that it wouldn't keep putting the little red line like this is not a real word it's like what well, yes it is because we invented yes, it. it is oh i love this uh, and all of the images in the deck and he talked about this in the interview it's all conceptual photography mm -hmm. so it's like him and his friends. He made all the props, the costumes, set up the scene, you know, jumped into the scene while he had this camera going off on a timer and everything. And get... Ooh, the, book, the book is wonderful because it's got like full color photographs of each of the cards in it. The magician. And um, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So yeah, we wanted to let everybody see. Yeah. So let's cards. start with the box. I want to start with the box because I, you Go know, more it. and more people are uh, people, more and more uh, publishers and um, deck creators, self publishers, deck creators are going with these types of boxes, which are infinitely better than, you know, the old cardboard flip top, you know, it's going to rip in three seconds boxes. This is very the substantial. The tuck box. Yeah. These are very nice. I love how he's got the picture on it. You know, yeah. 
one of the images and you get a little white book in there. It's got all, all of your nice little, you know, keywords and stuff like that in there. Um, but you also have a guidebook. Yeah, and what guidebook I want, substantial. <laughs> yeah, what I wanted to say about the, the companion book is that, okay, this is not a how to read tarot thing. You know, this is a companion yeah. for the imagery. Um, yeah. what, one thing I really liked, and I, I got to say this because I'm, I'm going to forget by the time we're done with it, you know, is in the back, he has his, uh, God, I got to turn off my blue, blue screen here. I'm trying to see. What is it? it I know. It's like I, I'm going up to the camera here, but it just won't do it. Um, it it's uh, conceptual drawings. Yeah, before he took the photography, which is really cool. You can look through his notes and everything here. And then something yeah. for each card like there. There's the magic. That's another thing I like about the images are full. I mean, full, full page, page. Dots in here. You know, you can really two of swords is just classic. I love the two of swords. Yeah, there. there's those drawings you were talking about. I don't have a green screen up. Oh, thank you. Because uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I got my green you can screen. See them. Going. Blue screen. No, this is. I mean, this is um, this is this deck is special. I just think it's in its own category, because most people that, I feel like most people I talk to, they're either. I mean, lately it seems like it's either artists that have ha, have a body of work, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of their ex existing artwork. Um, they can fit a deck, you know, maybe they yeah. have like hundreds of paintings or, both, you know, whatever uh, artwork that they've done. And then you have, you know, the real mavericks out there like Chiro Marchetti or something that's like, you know, I'm making my own concept and my own thing each time. Um, and then we'll, for some of his decks, like pull from those and kind of decide like okay maybe i'm going to revisit this or that but i mean a conceptual photographer making his own props i mean at a really working at a really high level mm -hmm. um i think it's rare i i think it's we don't have a lot of decks to compare with it you know yeah, and if you already have a lot of art done and you're drawing from that, you know, this is completely different. I mean, he started started yeah. from scratch, did the concept drawings that we just showed you, set up the scenes, did the photography all specifically for the deck, not as an afterthought, well, oh, I have 150 paintings, I'm gonna take elements from some of them and make a tarot deck. Yeah, well, he did it all for an art show to, you know, for, for an exhibit of his work, and he, I mean, he sewed the costumes. Like, what? I mean, like, yeah. Who? Like, huh? How? <laughs> you know? And then he has an art show in New York. I guess he's from Long Island or whatever. I mean, we found out about him when the um, the Met online, the yeah. for the Metropolitan Museum, their outlet interviewed him and, and wrote about it. And we're like, somebody's doing what? Tarot? Mm -hmm. Huh? You know, and the Met is writing about tarot. Who? What? You know, Ooh, so <laughs> we got a hold of him. And then after he had the exhibit of all his conceptual photography, all the 78 images, then it's like, I think the natural next step was to do a deck out of them, obviously, mm -hmm. right? But then I mean, remember we talked to him about you guys have to we You'll have to listen to that interview. He was just fantastic. But we talked to him, like, did you do Kickstarter or whatever? And, like, he did his own crowdfunding website yeah. that he built for that. So, like, yeah, this who isn't does... from one of the major publishers. Oh. And, and you, you can no. tell by the deck itself. You can tell. But I'm going to show an example yeah. just a second here. But uh, I wanted to point that out, you know, self-published. Yeah. This is a very special deck. It is very completely different. Uh, you mentioned uh, Chiro, and I have the Grand Lux here, of course, right? This is a big deck. However, yeah. if, if you set 
them on a if you set these on a table, Mary. Huh. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Mm. The Somnia deck is much thicker. Yeah. Which tells you the card stock on each card is thicker. Now, yeah. I mean, as far as the dimensions go, I wanted to point out that um, I mean they're relatively the same size, you know, mm. uh width and height is about approximately the same. Okay, but the thickness, oh my God, you know, because you you lay these two decks, you know, on a table and you can yeah. see you can see the size difference. You know, he did something interesting though, because like, you know, yeah, the the deck is wider, it's bigger, but look it's at that. Look how look how flexible it is. And that's what I'm finding with a lot mm -hmm. of self-published decks that'll do the what you would call more substantial card stock uh -huh. is that off, oftentimes you don't you lose flexibility. And so you're very, you know, kind of limited in the ways that you can shuffle them. And that's kind of one reason why I not usually looking at a lot of independent decks because mm. I find that issue over and over again and I'm kind of done with it. But so that was like, just, I don't know. There's something, he did something differently than what I'm seeing people do. And you still end up with like good card stock, but you still end up with flexibility too. And it's like got this like nice, like sort of matte, finish to it mm -hmm. and they you do know? they do slide really well which is what people well i won't say all yeah. but you know like a a majority want the slidiness because they want to be able to shuffle yeah i do i want slidiness but, and there's still enough yeah. give to rifle but you know if you have little hands like me i mean my god to grab this and to you know oh my god i mean <laughs> it's huge you know yeah. and i i have the exact same trouble with with the grand lux deck i'm getting better at it and i'm just doing yeah. the side shuffle i'm doing the um uh cutting and side shuffle and rifling you know a few times when i'm shuffling and i'm getting yeah. better at it but wow i mean you have to have a firm surface and you got to really stretch to <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, it's just, it's like an adjustment, um, breaking in your cards, you know, but let's show them the the cards. Here's the, I don't know, would you, we showed you the fool. Yeah, I did the major fool arcana. and the magician. Magician, oh, high priestess. Look how he did the towers with, mm -hmm. with smoke in them. And the vast majority, I wanted to point out the vast majority of the figures keep showing, keep showing uh, as I'm talking here, uh, the, yeah. the vast majority of the figures, uh, not all, but the vast majority have like they're they're draped in the cloth and then they have like a rope around the neck so you can see the silhouette, you know, um, and usually it's white or an off beige, but sometimes they're a black outfit like that one there or or brown or blue, um, and um, and it's interesting. The ones that aren't shrouded, it, you never see their faces. Mm -hmm. You know, so if they're not shrouded, they're facing away from you. Yeah, or some you of the never... women you see the back, you see their hair, but you don't see their face. Yeah, like this, this right here for the lovers mm -hmm. card, and I think that's him and maybe his girlfriend. Oh, he had his, his look at that card. Friends and family. Look yeah. what's behind their backs. She's got the apple and he's yeah. got a scissors and their hands that they're holding together are, are bound together, you know, yeah. like, like uh marriage and uh what what are the when when the pagans do a, a what do they call hand the fasting? Hand fasting, yeah. And and so they're like they're all tied up, but it looks like he's got the scissors and he can just like you know cut that you yeah. know and then meanwhile she's got the apple hidden from him that she's going to take the bite that she's not supposed to <laughs> you know it's very interesting imagery in there 
it's so fresh. You know, that's the thing. It, it's like he he didn't make a Rider Waite clone. He didn't do a yeah. lot of the normal conventions that we see. And you notice how one tree is on fire? Yes, because one's the tree of life and one's the tree of knowledge. Yeah. And, it's so. Yeah. And I, mean, I want to. One thing I want. Right, mm -hmm. right. One thing I wanted to get into and, and point out is, yeah, you know, the era that we've gone in now and uh, we've got, uh, you know, gay marriage becoming legal. Now we've got uh, more than two genders <laughs> we have to keep up with all the genders and everything like that. Also, there's, you know, this push for inclusiveness uh, with, you know, not just male, female, you know, uh, showing more three four people strong <laughs> not not just showing more strong women like say in movies and stuff like that but oh. also people of color right mm -hmm. different ethnicities and and so forth so that's translated into the tarot decks and what happens is um they'll put often the way they do that is they show you know different um you'd people you know and <laughs> And in some of the decks I've seen, Mary, and this is what I'm getting at with, with Nicholas's deck. In some of the, the one, uh, some of the decks that I've seen this done, it feels very forced to me. Whereas mm -hmm. with Nicholas's deck, he's eliminated that whole issue because they're shrouded or yeah. you don't see their face, you know? And so- yeah. You don't know what ethnicity anybody is. Half the time, you don't know if it's male or female. You have to look really close. You know, so um, I think that's really clever too. I, I'm not saying that he did that on purpose, but I'm just saying that that's something I noticed with the deck is that it, it the deck therefore lends itself to be used by any genre, you know, in, in any situation, um, any ethnicity yeah. you don't have to worry about that temperance i love that temperance oh yeah that's my that's probably my favorite picture in the whole thing of course i'm a well, temperance also, person <laughs> you're the the tempering path right but yeah. it's interesting because you know all of the imagery in his deck mm -hmm. is based off of the sleep paralysis nightmares that he been having since he was what a teenager i think he said yeah. and so a lot of times like in you know nightmares and dreamscapes you don't see the face you know there's that figure and you don't see the face but what your point is really good though because to me sometimes it's like when somebody is doing their own thing and they just happen to tap into the zeitgeist of the moment you know yeah. And it kind of ends up being like a perfect fit. So he's doing his own thing, this creative artistic process, not showing the faces. Sometimes you can't determine gender. And yet that is, it's like a debt coming out at the right moment mm -hmm. because it fits those, um, you know, I would, I would say, you know, shifting values, you know, this, mm. I love it the tower and i just look at that card and i just imagine like you know him shooting it that day it's yeah. like imagine all the timing involved it's like okay okay set it on fire get in there <laughs> you know? i mean so creative you know because he's he's bending underneath it and the top of it's on on fire and you know it's just like he takes his art form and looks at the tarot structure and it's like that creativity comes from how do I solve the problem? How do I solve the problem? What prop do I need to build? Yeah. What does the scene look need? What's another way that I could depict that concept? I mean, that's true artistry to me. And even something as simple as this, the star card, you can see that, you know, it's just that I don't the know. He, he, yeah, just it's so fresh with the way that he interpreted um, tarot meanings, like different different ways to represent the the basic 
meaning and feel of the card. I, I, it's, it blows my mind. And this, I love that this is uh, the sun card and the long red drape. Mm-hmm going down and you have the horse and you know it's it's just really interesting you've got the sun sort of you know with the light diffused in the background um and i I just love like i after seeing this death i want a life-size plastic horse that i can (laughs) like he used you know because i'm like wow how do you because even the horse is shrouded right yeah, and you know. I, I wonder if the whole shrouding started that way. Okay, I got this, you know, prop big plastic horse thing that I'm going to sit on. How do I make it not look like a fake horse? Oh, I know. I put a shroud over it. Oh, wait, why don't I shroud everything and everybody? <laughs> yeah. You wonder how and the I, thought process, you know. Yeah, like what, where, did, where did the initial mm. concept start? You know? Oh, I like also how uh, through the entire deck, um, you know how with Wait Smith you've got the the majors are in Roman numerals and then you got the regular numbers. Um, I like that you know it's Roman numerals through the whole thing, including the minor. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Chiro did that too. With what what deck did he do that with? He did that with. I think the last deck we reviewed, right? The um, Tarot Decorative. Well, also uh, with that. The, this one. Or maybe it's a Mystic Lux. Palette. I can't remember. No, in Lux too. Mm-hmm. Look, here's the Ten of Swords and it's an X. Yeah. So he's doing yeah. it maybe in several decks. Yeah. I like the Roman I numerals. Mean, I just like it. <laughs> Sorry. I do too. <laughs> You know, and it's funny, I forget what, I think I was talking about the, I think he did, I think you're right, he did it in more than one deck. Um, I think I was doing a review of the Mystic Palette, and I mentioned that about the Roman numerals, and it occurred to me, you know, just to wonder, like, are people even teaching Roman numerals anymore? Right. Like, do people learn that in school, (laughs) you know? Nobody ever talks about it. Yeah, it makes you wonder because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people yeah. coming out of school and they don't really know a whole lot of stuff. Anyway. Uh, it's weird. And look at the six of wands with the candelabra on top of his head. Mm-hmm. There's I mean, a, there's a cool. few actually, and there's a few in there where there's things hanging off their faces and stuff. It, it's almost, you know, uh, gothic slash horror, you know, in some yeah. of the images that, I mean, this would be a great deck just to use around Halloween, I think. Well, what I, you know, Brenda Elizabeth did that great um, workshop over the weekend on dreams. And I was thinking, mm-hmm. okay, this whole deck is based on dreams. It's all, all right. based on images he saw in dreams. You know, that might yeah. be a great deck to use for that yeah use this deck for uh dream interpretation um that's why i think you get some of the uh, the ones that do have some bizarre imagery it's like well it's dreams <laughs> you're gonna yeah. have you're gonna have candelabras coming out of people's faces and on top of their heads and you know we all the weird stuff yeah just, yeah, I mean, dreams can get pretty strange. Mm-hmm. Sure, a lot of people have had very strange imagery in their dreams. I, really I like know that. I have. Yeah, that is the page of wands. So I like how he's kind of sitting, sitting there. You know, looks like he could be writing. And sometimes we think of pages as messengers or getting a message, getting news of some type. Mm-hmm. You know, and then this is the Knight of Wands. It's time the horse is shrouded in black. Whoop, there you go. 
If I ever do a deck, I'm going to put on the master numbers, the 11, 22, 33, and 44 on the pages, knights, queens, and kings. You should do it, you know, because it's like, look, if you look at the Sola Busca, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I know most of our decks, we're so used to the idea that the court cards are never numbered, right? Mm -hmm. But the Sola Busca, it's 11, 12, 13, you know, the page, knight, right. queen, 14. I mean, on each card, it's the number is written on it. So mm -hmm. if they could do it, why couldn't you do your numbering on right. yours? I think that would be awesome. That's how I teach it because I do tarot by the yeah. numbers and I'm using it's numerology. You know, there, there has to be, uh, you know, what, what do we do with the core cards? Well, I figured out pretty early on about 20 years ago that oh they line up perfectly with the master numbers so yeah i want to put that on there for sure oh look you at should. that yeah this is really cool this is the ace of cups and it's like a a well oh yeah i like anything with a well in it yeah i i wonder you know um what the what the symbolic meaning of a well is i mean i guess there's the obvious ones or whatever but there is something about it mm -hmm. i've always been fascinated by wells i always love it when you go someplace like maybe a little tourist place or something and there's a wishing well and you can throw your pennies in there and yeah so there's the wishing well the wish. but then there's yeah. all the people trapped down in the well imagery too oh know, yeah all the and lastie what is it, Lassie? Is Timmy in the well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all those stories that happened. I was the child that fell in the well in the 80s. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know it's, it is funny. It, it, it must be like a, something we've been worried about for centuries or that's been happening for centuries. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just love it. I mean, and I love that there's those big full color pictures like this is such a lovely six of cups to me you know i love the imagery in that and this this was this i love like this is seven of cups i mean it's perfect it's just a perfect concept for the seven of cups you know and have like different things in each cup but actually mm -hmm. to like to to do that create a process is like you look at the look at the classic Rider Waite Smith Seven of Cups and you're like okay how can I do that outside with some sort of objects I don't know <laughs> it's just special there's another one with some water I think that's the Eight of Cups and then the Nine of Cups. You know, it's just definitely different. And I don't know. I mean, I feel like this is a deck that is probably, you know, really going to be more um, for collectors in a sense, you know, in a way. Like, oh, you yeah, know, I can see that. I, I mean, think it's so special. Like, I'm not going to like tear it up with my riffle shuffling, you know? Yeah, I don't, I don't see a lot of people using it to do readings but hey you know there there's going to be people that are really a, attached to it and get a lot of out of the symbolism and so they are going to use them for readings you know yeah but not like in the way that sometimes you know we really like work our tarot decks until they're just like little scraps well, that's <laughs> you know? that's the thing you know i mean this is a um i don't know what this goes for retail i i haven't looked 65 on yeah i mean when you're when you're spending 50 plus dollars for a deck you're not going to use it as your everyday yeah you know you're going to wait yeah. until one of the major publishers picks it up and does a mass produce version it's like if you if you get one of Chiro's decks and it's yeah. and, and it's signed and it's one of his artist decks and and then you're going to wait for like 
Llewellyn or US Games to come out with uh, the mass produced version. And that's the one you're going to use for readings. <laughs> and that's actually what I've got. This is the mass produced version. So I'm using it. Yeah. For <laughs> well, it's so true because it's like I have the mass produced Grand Lux. And, but I also like bought his. Um, his independent like mystic palette because I just could not resist it. Mm -hmm. um, here's the four swords, but yeah, it's like, I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> so I'm like, I hope somebody does make it, you know, you just have to wait like what, a couple of years or something. And I don't know if, if we asked Nicholas, if he was, you know, thinking of going that route of, of, um, you know, if he'd even want to do that to have it. I don't know if we even asked him about that. You know, it's so hard to remember because it was back in January and we're only now yeah. getting around to doing the review. <laughs> I know. Well, it's like 5,000 things happened in the meantime. Yeah, way too Just much. made it impossible. On. And look how clever that is for the Six of Swords. Oh, yeah. I love that. And I'm like, are you in a balloon yeah <laughs> yeah hot, hot air balloon it's the gondola of a hot air balloon and you know that's what I, it looks I love like anything with hot air balloons or anything aviation at all of course you know i was in the air force so <laughs> did you I ever go to the have you ever gone to the balloon festival in albuquerque every year no but uh when i uh, you know, in, in various places I've lived here in Arizona, uh, it, it's actually really big here in Arizona. So I have been at some festivals where they did massive balloon launches where they all were launching at the same time. It's a sight to see, let me tell you. No. You know, there's so, you know. Many, there's so many yeah. aircraft and, and, and uh, you know, not just planes, but helicopters, balloons, uh, blimps you know zeppelins etc uh i'm surprised somebody hasn't done a uh, aviation tarot deck you know that's a good point i'm kind of surprised that they haven't either because so many people are into it yeah i may have to work on that and this is the page of swords this is clever that page of swords actually really reminds me of the Waitsmith, though. I like that. It's subtle. Oh, yeah. It's subtle, the similarity, but you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. The Knight of Swords. And then, and I love these queens. His queens are so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, the, um, the imagery just is really like sort of arresting. You know, it's like you... And I think what it is, is like, maybe, maybe, you, you know, we become accustomed, right? We become accustomed to looking at the same imagery in a tarot card, the same symbolism, um, even if it's not, you know, using the Rider Waite Smith, mm. um, you know, so many people are doing things that like, oh. you know, remind you of it. I don't know if you got to the Knight of Wands uh, yet, mm. but um this is what I was talking about, like with the candelabra coming out of his face and then he's holding yeah. the candelabra. It's like, you know, that's very dream kind of. Yeah. Image. And this is one of my favorite cards because it's like, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, Nicholas, don't fall. <laughs> you know, the two of pinnacles card there. Mm -hmm. Where you see how he's balancing on top of all of that. Yes. And just so cool. Just so cool. I mean, this is somebody like nobody does all of this, you know, to to make a tarot deck. They don't put themselves through that, you know. That's they, a ton of work. Oh my god. It isn't. Most people are like, oh, I taught myself Photoshop and here's five thousand decks I did. You know, yeah. it's like it's like it's simple. People aren't um, you know, doing this kind of conceptual photography. They're not prop mm -hmm. making costuming oh that's another thing though that i i don't think we asked him was about that you know is is it strictly photography or is some of the elements photoshopped because i don't know 
you know, because so, some of the well, obviously some of it has to be because you got the you got the buckets floating in the air with no visible means of support, you know, unless they're on wires or something. How did he do that image, yeah. right? So I figure some yeah. of it must be Photoshop, but he like he did all the photography himself, but then had to collage a couple of things. Maybe I don't know, but a lot of it looks like it's a full on scene where the whole thing is propped. Yeah, and there's some where you do see like the wires and stuff and see like mm -hmm. how like this, like where you put them like on a trellis. Yeah. I mean, maybe it is all, I don't know. That's something we should have asked him, but I, I, I didn't see I that think, until now. I think, and then that one that's like on the wooden. Right. You have right. The, the disc on the wooden thing. I mean, it looked like he just kept doing, finding like more and more creative ways and like those like on the, on the back of the chair, mm -hmm. different ways to hang this, the, the pentacles, at least you really <laughs> yeah. see it. And and this is nice the way he did the look it's it is like the tree of life right you know it's so reminiscent of it yeah. you know so you, so you don't really lose you know some of those concepts that you know i think they're very important to a lot of readers you know they want to see a they see a card mm -hmm. and they're like oh it's got to have this and that and this and that you know, and that's what makes a Ten of Pentacles for me. You know, uh, other people are kind of looser about mm -hmm. it. They'll just accept the title of the card as being what it is. But, well, <laughs> and here's Nicholas as the page of as Pentacles the, in a hole. Well, <laughs> well, earlier when you were holding up the uh, Queen of Swords, uh, mm -hmm. so here, here's an example. I looked at that and the first thing I noticed is, oh, she's facing the wrong direction. Mm. I, I mean, not that there is actually a wrong direction, but if you're if you if you're basing everything like, on Wade Smith, it's like okay, she faces this way, he's got her facing this way, which you know right. is really interesting, you know. And then you have to kind of change how you interpret that card in positions. If you right, here's the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, see, she she's facing. Uh, the same direction too. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you did that with all the queens. I didn't notice that. Pick that detail up. Um, I don't know. And then lastly, here's the king who's facing forward. Yeah, he's. Let me pull forward. the queens out and see. Yeah. Because yeah, well, I didn't even think about that. But it's like I'm so used to like having so many decks having people facing in uh, so many different directions that it. I don't even. Yeah. I, See, I, I, used, uh, I use I use directionality a lot in in reading, you know, and uh, it's it's part along with numerology and other things. It's part of the the symbolism to me, you know, and yeah, uh, it is to me, too. But I base it on the deck I'm using. Right, right. I don't, and that's and that's perfectly fine. But I think that there's a lot of people out there like uh, myself that. Yeah has so much you know just used the weight smith that we're so used to it being a certain way that w w we have to even think in our heads oh, oh wait okay she's facing that way she's got she's got her back to to, to this card you know where whereas the weight smith version would be oh well no her back's to this card over here you know and anyway just little things yeah i mean you know th that's it makes a lot of sense to me and it, and it's like i'm saying with like some of the other symbols in the in the cards too you know some people are really you know um i guess like purists in the sense you know yeah. like they they want to see the same thing in every yeah. deck but see i think that the, uh, a lot of times uh terologists so, are using the new word terologists um queen of pentacles yeah Queen of Cups. Oh, yeah, they are facing all to the left there. Except for Queen of Wands. Oh, she oh, she's face on. Okay. She's face on. And then the and then the Queen of Swords. So yeah. Yeah. You know, most of them are yeah. going to the left. Um yeah. I, I think three that, out of four. <laughs> but what I was getting at is uh I uh 
tagging on with what you said earlier is I, I think that a lot of people, um, uh, they overthink it. They really, you know, as long mm. as you have an essence idea of the card, if you switch to a different deck, like let's say we switch to Somnia and mm -hmm. the queen's facing the other way, you know, it's like, just go with what you see, you know, okay, her back's to, yeah. um, or, it, you know, if a certain um, symbolism is missing, I think they make too big of a deal out of it because you, you have the essence and you remember the symbolism and I, and I often say when I'm using a deck that's not Wade Smith, I'm translating it into Wade Smith. But you can also uh, use the symbolism that's there. So with the Somnia deck, you're getting additional symbolism that you wouldn't get in, yeah. um, in not only Wade Smith, but you know any vague even version or full-on clone of Wade Smith is completely different. I mean, you can really go with it, you know, whatever the symbol yeah. is in that card. Well, I think too, it's like, it, I think it all goes back to, you know, what, why do we use different decks? Mm -hmm. Why, why do we choose a deck that we use? Why do we want to work with a, with a certain deck? And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if people are really, you know, attached, you know, then I, then I think they might be better served just getting a different version of the Rider White Smith, you know, get a prettier yeah. version, a brighter version, a, get Sharona's version. I mean, that's a gorgeous yeah. take on the Rider White Smith, gorgeous colors, you know, the Boho Pixie deck that, um, what's the, what's the one that, oh. that you like a lot? The Radiant, is it? Yeah, the, I like the radiant version for the colors, and also yeah. that, that they made the lines thinner. You know, uh, oh, I wanted to. I, I'm checking out the chat because uh, you know the comments. Uh, I, you know, we've been so busy here. I have really not been paying attention. I'm sorry, everybody, but you know, a lot of comments, <laughs> a lot of comments from Vita and Sharona and stuff. Um, I don't. Hi, everybody. Know, I don't know. I don't know if Vita caught it, but she was asking, "What does the star look like?" And here's the star card. Yeah. I just thought I'd get that out for Vita. And uh, yeah. so v Vita says, "So this is like an art deck." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. By, <laughs> it's an art. Deck. By a conceptual by photographer. An, artist, an actual. Yeah. Artist. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an art deck, but it can be it can be used for readings. I think I can see that. I you know, and again, you know, I, I really thought of this when um, on Sunday, Brenda Elizabeth was saying, like, you know, she was teaching methods. If anybody had missed that workshop, go yeah. back and catch it. If you're a premium member on the Tarot Guild website, because it was great. But using tarot to interpret your dreams or to do dream work. And she recommends like setting aside um, mm. a certain deck just for that, like especially for that. So this would be, I to me, that's what I'm going to set this one yeah, aside I mean, for. If you don't have something, uh, you know, a, a deck that kind of fits that genre, it's like, I mean, this is, if you have this or if you want to get the, oh my yeah. God, you know, I, I think that would be perfect for dream interpretation. And also, yeah. you know, you don't, you might not get that as frequent, which means you might not be using the deck as frequent, which means you'll be able to keep it in good shape. Um, yeah. As Monk opposed to day-to-day -day readings. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, look, you know, my uh, most used deck is the Ludi Lascott deck and it's been Ooh, look through at that. A lot. <laughs> you ah. can see. It's like pretty rough at this point, you know. And I bought a, a, a another mm -hmm. copy that I haven't, you know, unboxed yet because <laughs> I'm just gonna wear it out until it's like little teeny, you know, just little squares of paper left. Yeah. But I'm not gonna do that to a deck I paid sixty five dollars for. I paid eighteen for this. Right. You know. But yeah. you know, if you've got throw away money then you know go for it 
why not? You know, you got to well, do what know, feels right. I'm not too worried about it. like if it was a $185 one of a kind artist. Uh, and when I, when I say yeah. one of a kind, I don't mean the only one. I mean, like Chiro made uh, limited 250. Yeah. Limited 250 copies. And he signed them all, you know, and, and, and yeah. they're $185. Yeah. I'm not going to use that. <laughs> You know, yeah. But if, well, if, it's, right. if it's $18, $35, $65, I may still do it, you know, because I, yeah. I actually I only just replaced my universal weight from 1998. You know, wow. so I I use a deck 20 years and it's still in pretty decent condition. I mean, not I I mean uh, it it was uh gone enough where i bought a new version and replaced it right. yeah i still i still kept it though because i feel like there's something in the energy there that i don't want to it's not like i'm going to throw it out i'm going to keep it but i just oh yeah i switched to a new deck for doing readings and um i don't know i i just uh I'm just very, I, I guess I'm very gentle with the decks. Even when I rifle, I don't rifle like some, oh my God, you watch some of those people on YouTube and they're shuffling and, and, and you're like, yeah. oh my God, they must destroy a deck in a week. You know, <laughs> especially yeah. with those acrylic nails. They got these acrylic nails that are two inches long and they're like, <sighs> I'm like, I know. There was that me. one, <laughs> it's so funny. There was that one you sent me and I and I watched it and then I've like moved to like another video. I wanted to see what what she was saying about like some other thing. And the one you sent me, she had the long fake nails, you know, that are like, you know, to a point and really, really long. And you're thinking, like, how do you shuffle with that? How do you eat with it? How do you do anything with it? And then like the next video, she had taken the nails off and like it was like really short fingernails and I was like well I like the long nails better like aesthetically you know so I think like they must wear them like just for those videos yeah right? it's all otherwise... show props I think it's all it's, it's like a, the people that dress mirrors. up in the turban you know it, it's and, the, and if you think about it, you know the, the candles and the crystals and everything like that you're a real crystal person I think about 80% of these people, the crystals are just for show, you know, and, and the, and the candles are for show and the acrylic nails are for show. It's all for show. You think so? Because like, look, I do. I really sitting, do. Sitting here with you. Right. I mean, I mean, I'm like, I've got crystals galore. I've got mm -hmm. crystals everywhere. Crystals, crystals. I always have sure. crystals. So, so I believe like, I want to believe that the crystal thing is like true, you know, like that's who they are. Oh, yeah. Then, I'm not like, saying whether or not it is. And, and someone like you that works with crystals is obviously going to have them. But I think a lot of people are using props. It's like it's like the Christmas tree lights in the background and the candles and the, it's all for show folks. Right. It's not, you know. Well, it does. It's set design. We could it's say set design. Set design You're setting an atmosphere and costuming, you know, with yeah. the with the nails, you know. But yeah, the nails blow my mind. There's like oh, wild. Yeah. Look at the outfits on... that Radley used to wear all the time. Radley Valentine, who, by the way, is going to love... be our guest. Yes, on the 18th of June yeah. on the Tarot Today Radio Show. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We had Radley it's on. It's been before, years. Though in years he's done so much and there's like so many decks and everything like that and he's like the one of the hardest working men in tarot business because he's impossible to track down <laughs> i mean i was oh, like yeah. this is ridiculous you know and then and he's everywhere. out of the blue yeah he's everywhere but he's impossible to <laughs> to, to catch you know he's magic <laughs> well not, not unless you're gonna fly to toronto boston and sandy San Diego, San Francisco, you know. where it happens to be. Yeah, you have to get on a plane uh, to find him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So this everybody was Nicholas Bruno Somnia deck. 
insomnia deck, not insomnia. It's Check out gorgeous. our Tarot Today uh, radio interview with Nicholas. It's in the video section on the Tarot Guild yeah. Facebook group. And th- speaking of the Tarot skirt. Today radio show, we have our Psychic Spin episode coming up this yes. Saturday. Yes. Who's live with us, Sharona and Vita? We don't have too many people live right now, but you know, does anybody have any suggestions for psychic spin? You know, this is the big questions. I'm looking to see here. Yeah. We'll see if they say. I mean, uh, Vita just said about yeah, it's for aesthetics only. Um, so uh they're a little behind <laughs> so oh right there's a delay the nails. There. yeah but yeah you know any of the big questions how does how does the law of attraction work you know are are aliens really visiting us you know what happened to bigfoot these, i don't know <laughs> these aliens we haven't done bigfoot oh my god yeah we never did bigfoot did we I love Bigfoot. I mean, I think I love Bigfoot. I like yeah. the idea of Bigfoot. If Bigfoot is nice, I don't know if Bigfoot's nice or not. Well, you know, there's so many different ideas with that, with like um, uh, they're trans dimensional beings. They go from one yeah. universe to the other. Uh, they're that's why they disappear and you can't find them or no, no, they're, they're cryptozoological, you know, they're, yeah, cryptids. Uh, you know, there's, there's like all these different concepts of Bigfoot yeah. and there, then there's Bigfoot in, you know, the $6 million man and the bionic woman, you know, it's actually a robot by aliens, you know, or people mm. from the future. I forget the episode now anyway, but yeah. Maybe and we pull, should do Bigfoot. And he pulls the arm off, you know. <laughs> I love the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman were my favorite things when I was a kid, let me tell you. I love the sound effects, like. <laughs> <laughs> Those were so cool. That sounds more there. like Friday the 13th, right? You know, every time, like, before something would happen. Yeah, with, it's very close. The sound was very close, actually. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we could do Bigfoot, but if anybody has any ideas between now and Saturday, you know, we can uh, pull cars. Let on. us know. Otherwise, yeah. we're going squatching. That's right. And uh, <laughs> also, while we're on the topic here, I'm going to I'm going to mention here. Let's see. Um, so we have our psychic spin on Saturday. Now on Monday the thirtieth um janice will be putting out for her wisdom of the soul she'll be putting out an article uh katherine han is on break she told me because it's memorial day folks she's going to take a break but she'll be back the following monday uh june 6th and then on june 4th saturday june 4th is there's a rock for that with mary here and uh she's meteorite is her crystal guest and speaking of guests she has gary rosenberg coming on the four pillars society tarot oh my gosh y'all you have to like has has everybody been like watching the artist notes and cards that gary rosenberg has been posting on the tarot guild I facebook love group yeah that's amazing that that is from his new deck we're going to talk about that and the Kickstarter for that deck kicks off, I think, around the beginning of June. So it's sort of like perfect timing. And any questions you have for him, if you've been seeing his posts and stuff, you know, say something, call in, oh, watch, listen, do something by, about by it. <laughs> before I, you mentioned Kickstarters. Before I forget now, um, we, we have a, a couple of new workshops that are quote unquote in the can. They're ready. They're available to watch now. Tarot magic with Sharona, Sharona Rapsic mm-hmm. and tarot and dreams with Brenda Elizabeth that we just did on Sunday. Um, I just confirmed with Jennifer Cooper Steidley that she's going to do her workshop on Sunday, June 12th 
and it's mm. going to be it, it's that uh when we had to postpone so tarot decks self-publishing kickstarters and more all about you know creating your first deck or maybe more you know and uh how to do kickstarters and publish yeah. self-publishing and all it's going to be a great conversation uh i'm hoping you'll be there mary like you and i can ask questions uh you know i don't know if jennifer has like a, a presentation i'm thinking she's coming on to do more of a talk so we might want to ask questions about publishing self-publishing you know how to do a kickstarter the right way she had a, a, a is one of our one of several of our guests that have had fantastic Kickstarters. And then yeah. um, Sharona's going to be and back. And we had her on the Tarot Today radio show too. Yeah. And if you go and check out the uh, upcoming workshop page on thetarotguild.com, you know, you'll see a banner for it. You can just click and read more about it and get the Zoom link and everything. Uh, I actually have that all linked on there. So you can go and you can listen to our interview with her and you can also see our live video walkthrough and review of the tarot disassembled deck and oh I, yeah i forgot we did that yes <laughs> yeah just like we did today with with uh somni i love these uh tag team reading or readings. They're fun. tag team reviews you know i i uh i used to call them tag team readings when we did you know readings on the air that you know uh anyway but I, I always thought that that was a uh an interesting concept i'd love to have a uh a, a tag a tag team reading circle where it's like you know group of master it's not some reader reads for you it's a group of masters reads for you that'd be the coolest thing um so i did want to mention real quick also that sharon is coming back actually each month you know so she just did her Tara Magic one in May. She's got one in June and one in July. So she's coming back with an introduction to astrology for Tara readers on the 19th. And on the 26th, the following Sunday is Corby Metlide. Three cards ain't just where she's telling us about three card readings and how powerful they can be. And then Sharon is also doing an introduction to Kabbalah for tarot readers in July. And then we have a whole bunch of other workshops we haven't scheduled yet, but coming up here. Stuff. Yeah, I think we, um, and, I, and I mentioned all the radio shows, I think, uh, let's see. And we, again, you know, let us know about the psychic spin. That's the Saturday. And right. unless you tell us something that you, really really have a burning question about the big question we're gonna go with bigfoot yeah right yeah. i'm gonna go with bigfoot anyway let's just do bigfoot anyway because we, let's we, go squatching i'm glad that just popped in my head you know because uh, i'm thrilled <laughs> when does bigfoot ever pop in your head i know you know it's like i was just yeah. thinking of the stuff that that's way out there that we've already done the robots taking over and the aliens and are there ghosts? It could happen. <laughs> yes, there are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I mentioned uh, Radley Valentine, you know, we were just talking about uh, God. It's so great. Got him coming on June 18th, you know, um, but, and then of course you're, there's a rock for that, but we, we don't have anything scheduled for the 11th. So uh, that's a, to be announced folks. We might do a topic. We might get a guest scheduled in there. I kind of want to do a topic, but I don't know what, you know, kind of like what we're doing right now. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Just and take a lot of calls. Or we, yeah. I was going to say, or we might just take calls. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Well, we can so the topic is taking calls. <laughs> now, we, we always think of something. Yeah, there'll be a, a, a fun topic. It'll be to awesome. Talk. And the, uh, the, the 12th, um, uh, Sharona's kind of doing the same thing because uh, her guest for the 12th fell through. And so she decided to go with a open lines uh, and free tower reading show June 12th. And she's also going to be talking about the moon magic and madness <laughs> awesome yeah 
Well, I guess we uh, should end here. We've pretty much covered everything, all the stuff coming up yeah. at the Tarot Guild and Psyche Talk Radio. If you got any questions, suggestions, get a hold of us. You know, we would love suggestions for things, you know, and topics and guests you want us to have and topics you want us to cover. All Psychic kinds. spin questions, yeah. <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we're, do, we're doing Sasquatch here, but, you know, uh, still give us all your ideas because we have a psychic spin the end of every month. So, you know, we, we need yeah. other ideas, you know. Mary and I have been coming up with the ideas for, you know, two, three years now or more. And, and it's like, we're running out of ideas. You know, you got to tell us what to do. Never. We'll never uh, run out of ideas, but I'd love to know what people, other people think of too, what yeah, they want to know. They might have some cool stuff, you know, and Sharona uh, came up with that, you know, are we on the brink of World War Three one? Yeah. Yeah. So. See? That was a good one. Okay, everybody. Well, thanks for being here with me, Mary. I'm glad we finally got the Somnia Tarot review in. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas Brunels, for your for your brilliance and patience. <laughs> yeah, we gotta have him back. And I'd love to have him come and to, you know, even though we did the workshop uh tarot and dreams with Brenda, this I'd love for him to do a talk because uh, there's his whole story that he could go a little more in depth. You know, we only had a short amount of time, 35, 40, 45 minutes on a radio show. Um, right. He can go more in depth into that particular story uh, and uh, dream. Well, I'd love it. Yeah. I'd love it if he did a workshop because, you know, he not only all of this, but he works with people from all over the world on who have had a similar experience with sleep paralysis and right. with finding meaning the in sleep. their dreams and everything. Paralysis. And so somebody that has that kind of perspective of, I just think it would be interesting. Like are people dreaming the same things like all over the planet? Like that would be weird. That could be a premise for a movie. Like we all have the same dream and then all of a sudden what is aliens that arrive. You know, right? I, I think there's a, a lot of, <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know they, come out, they come out with all those dream encyclopedias and dictionaries and so forth, or whatever. Uh, you call them. But I don't, I don't believe in that stuff. However, you know, they've got to be getting it from somewhere when they're, when they look and they see that, you know, there's got to be at least themes that that are in common even though the actual detail is completely different i think from person to person but there'll, there'll be themes there's the flying theme yeah. and the drowning theme and the this theme and they're that theme, you know and the person chasing you is like the biggest one you know but is it an alien or bigfoot yeah. chasing you <laughs> or your grandmother what is it right you know yeah, the mother in law. It's, it's, it's the it's always it the mother in law. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> okay. That's well, funny. bye, Mary. Bye, everybody. Thanks for those that joined us. And uh we'll try to do some lives a little bit more frequently. But <laughs> there was just a lot going on the last couple of months, you know. Oh my god, hospitalizations, doctors' visits, just endless stuff going on. So crazy stuff. I'm trying to get back to normal. Define normal. Yeah, define <laughs> normal. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.